big boss that's special It ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level Hello, Internet, and welcome back, or welcome to Codename Morpheus, episode 26. And uh, we've been away, but now we're back, and we're ready to bring you a ton of news, because I've sort of carried some over from the week before that I thought was worth talking about. My name is Tom, and I'm here to host the show for you, along with my beautiful co-host, Mr. Keegan Vi. Say hi to the folks at home. Hi to the folks at home. And uh, how has your morning been so far? It's good. Uh, we got Codename knocked out. Or not Codename. We got Indie knocked out. We're on Codename now. Yeah, we're knocking it out. <laughs> we're knocking it out yeah. now. Uh, so you can check out Indie. Please add details. Episode 23, I believe, was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, as Tom said, we've been off for a week. So we've got uh, Wizard World we'll talk discussions about next that. tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. be on the lookout for that tomorrow. And uh, so, without further ado, let's Big dig VR week. into VR, because yes, it is a huge week. For and lots this, of games. If you're unfamiliar with Codename Morpheus, let me just throw this out there. It is basically our weekly uh, chat show, talk show, whatever, about PSVR. In particular, we will mention other VR things as they pop up, if they are sort of in the cycle of potentially affecting uh, PSVR. But uh, mostly we're sticking on the Sony side of things. So um, that's what we own. Without further ado, let's talk about new New games because fuck man there's a ton of them this week uh it's a big week for uh vr and let's start with the sort of the lesser known i would say of the five new releases this week uh cube works have you watched any footage of this i watched the trailer mm. and i was confused because it looked like <laughs> it looked like literally cubes fly at you and you put them together in a puzzle like state yeah that's yeah. about all i got that's kind of what i got out of it too. Uh, the music was real annoying though mm. I, t I muted it so essentially, you're in a factory type scenario. You're like a Foxconn worker or something. And these cubes are coming down a conveyor belt. And as you succinctly put, you grab said cubes, uh, look for patterns that match, and then slap them together. And then I assume you build a little something. Or maybe um, you're just a factory worker. And then it kind of disappears, um, you know, after you've put all the cubes together. So it's kind of like a weird. VR version of a match three game, um, but with elements of uh, like the the bomb defusal game that we played and and Keep like that. Explode, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna mute my phone because because there's uh, yeah because basically like there are like power ups and things like that. But as you're watching the trailer, they kind of they make a big point out of like this is how the game works. You get a block, get a block, look for the things that match, boom together. Which is perfect because then go. you know what you're getting into. Very kind simple. Of. Um, but then the like shortly after that, they're like there are power ups. There are immersive environments, and then they just kind of stop talking <laughs> about like what else there is. So it doesn't sound like there's much more than that. Um, but essentially, yeah, it's a little puzzle game. It doesn't look bad by any means. No. Uh, looks like it's well put together, but it just might be um, not for everybody, depending on uh, whether you're A, a fan of puzzle games, and B, uh, what kind of longevity you're looking for out of your game. Luckily, it is priced at a pretty appropriate price at $10. So if you just want to pick up a nice, sweet little puzzle game, um, which is kind of like a weird version of a match three in VR, then Cubeworks looks like it might be your guy. Um, and then, of course, the the one of the two titles that I picked up right away this week mm -hmm. is uh, Drunken Bar Fight, which I'm so excited to play. You have no idea. Um, right so all physics. Yeah, Ragdoll Physics bar fight game. So basically, you are in a bar, people want to fight you, and you can use any means of your disposal. Is, this, is it only single player or multiplayer have we determined? I have no fucking idea. I yeah, sure. I really don't know enough about it at this point. Um, but, I, you know, I watched the trailer for it, and you see the uh, the Ragdoll Physics at work, and it just looks so much fun. So, yeah, you're basically just punching people out at a bar, and you can, like, throw darts at them and chairs at them and throw them through windows and out balconies. And it's... Um, the Ragdoll is, I think, what's going to make it really fun because, you know, they're just, like, bending over backwards and stuff when you're knocking them out. Um, but it looks like a really, really fun time. So... Um, uh, I, of course, will play that and review it and have that up for you uh, probably before the end of the week. But it looks really, hey, really cool. Hey, another, another sale going or We're not making sales yet, but a sale going on right now is you buy 12 months of uh, PSN, you get three months for free right now because the Lunar New Year. Lunar I'm trying to see if this is multiplayer, which is why I'm here. Go for it. Um, while you're working on that, let's talk about the other punching game this week, which is the priciest game. Oh, I never mentioned, sorry, $12 for <laughs> Drunken Bar Fight. Uh, uh, Knockout League is the other punchy game. Uh, that is $30. And Knockout League is just essentially a kind of a goofy, like oh. ready to rumble boxing uh, type game, uh, which is just you in a boxing ring versus a variety of opponents. Uh, unfortunately, 
there wasn't a trailer available on the PS store for people that are looking for it there. We'll find some footage for you. It'll be right there. Um, but like the picture that shows up when you actually go to the uh, Knockout League area is of an octopus with eight boxing gloves. So you can imagine like sort of what road this boxing game is going down. Very goofy. The 12 months was Hong Kong because you apparently were in the Hong Kong store. Oh, yeah. That's, no, that's you know, not us. That's I'm not America. All, I'm all over the place. Um, but yeah, so uh, Knockout League, $30. I, that's one that I decided to wait on. Um, I may pick it up in a sale. I may pick it up next week when I have a bit more uh, cash. Drunken Bar Fight. One to five players. One to five players? Yes. Oh, let's get it on online, guys. Add level two gamers STL. <laughs> Tom's like, I want to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> we will, and we'll get, get fighting. Um, but yeah, Knockout League looks looks it looks interesting. Um, I would it looks actually, like Punch-Out back in the day is what it reminds me of. Right, I mean, that's exactly what it reminds me of. I would love uh, some some word on that so it's if any a, of you have picked that up this week uh please comment below tell us what you think of it is it worth picking up this it's only single people, player plenty of other people watching this that want to know those answers and uh, that's one that we're kind of like we're going to hold off on it first for a little bit uh then probably pick it up down the line uh pop up pilgrims this one i'm probably the least excited about you think so dude because there's think you one would probably end up liking this. There's honestly. one that I'm super pumped about. All right, so Pop Up Pilgrims, fifteen dollars. Uh, this is one of those games. That I know. I actually just realized why you don't like it. Yeah. It's one of those. It looks like a two D game, and you don't know why it's in VR. Yes. Is that right? Okay. So so basically, Pop Up <laughs> Pilgrims, very Japanese like stylized it, game. It is. Uh, it's like uber Japanese mythology in there. There's lots of giant toads and things like that. You're nailing why I don't like this game. Mm -hmm. You're nailing why I don't like this Japanese. Game. It's Japanese, and, and it doesn't have a reason to be in VR. Go. I mean, it could. I don't want. I don't want to be like, no. I'm just not interested. It kind of looks saw. a little bit lemmingsy. Like you're basically taking a group of pilgrims uh, through a two D environment that is spread out. In a virtual plane, so uh, you have to help them yeah, navigate Z space and so on. I think this will be cool. I think it's going to be way more interesting to actually play in headset. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, all of the footage that exists of this game so far doesn't really do justice to how it's going to be. If this, if this is one of those things where like you're playing it, what would make this make sense in VR to me is if you're playing the, the, the world and you have, because you, you can see the different layers, mm. if you spin around and there's still stuff behind you, like you continue the world behind you, then it makes more sense in VR. Versus just staring in this thing that's floating in front of you. I think there's something to be said because you like God games, right? I there's love God games. There's something to be said for kind of like feeling like a like you're controlling. Yeah, but the a God game, but a God game in, in a 2D platformer is the is where I got the issue. It's more so the viewpoint. Because you know if you're up above it looking down and it's 2D, you're seeing on the top of the paper. Know, maybe like Paper Mario type situation. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but either way, Pop-Up Pilgrims, $15. Looks interesting. Again, uh, alongside Knockout League. Let us know if you've played it and you really like it. It's something I'm sure we'll pick up at some point and got to do a review for it. Um, but the next game is the big one this week. Uh, We're outside both of Drunken Bar Fight for me. Uh, and this we one We both picked is this one up. We did, and uh, it's probably going to be on Sunday. We're going we're gonna to probably have a little race. We'll see. Uh, Sprint we'll Vector. We'll see how sick I get while playing it. That's <laughs> going to be the test. It's going to be cool. Uh, Sprint Vector finally made its way to release this week, uh, and it is on a PS Plus sale right off the bat. Uh, usually a $30 game down to 21 if you have PS Plus. Which is which good because I, I thought this game was 20 when I when I first heard about it, but everything I've read about this game has been positive. There's a few things here and there, like tracking wise, that'll be an issue with PlayStation versus the PC versions because the whole turn, the way the way they play and you turn around is kind of weird. Uh, it's the best way to, to explain it. Like it, it, the tracking, like with a a Vive, you also have the two cameras. So if you turn around backwards, it can still track your hands, which is how you move. And a PSVR, if you turn around, your body's blocking the camera. Mm. It may be harder to track. Can you so, turn around in this game? I, I know nothing of like how you. I mean, I watched it. Jack Septic I play, and he was doing he was doing three sixties in his room. So. Oh, really? You can yeah. like jump, spin, and stuff. I mean, he wasn't actually. No, he was spinning while he's playing. Ah, oh, okay. Like he, to turn, he would he would turn. Gotcha. So, um, I mean, it I'm, looks, interested, I'm interested to see how it works with PSVR specifically. It looks, it looks great. It's from a great company. Servios are really great. Um, and I'm excited. I'm really excited for it. Everything that we've seen so far has been positive. Uh, the PSVR Without Parole guys reviewed it, and they said it's one of their favorite games that exists on PSVR right now, which is high praise because those guys review everything. Um, so, yeah, we're really excited for it. Plus, because it's multiplayer, it means we get to play it together on a stream. Um, but essentially, uh, if you know nothing about Sprint Vector, it is a kind of a, would you say, like a... 
rollerblader ice ice skating style game uh, where you're racing down a track. Think like Sonic, I guess. Um, but there's lots of kind of like jumps and power ups and all that kind of jazz. It'll hold you over till Wipeout VR gets its update. Um, but yeah, it looks like a lot of fun and exhausting. So we're really excited to give it a try. I, I feel like my my level of fitness might work against me in this yeah. game, but um, I'm going to give it a go anyway. Um, so yeah, Sprint Vector was the other big one. And actually, that is the only PSVR game that's on sale this week as well that I could see. Uh, so that $21 uh, from 30 discount is uh, is definitely worth a, a look. And I, I'm actually kind of pumped that they decided to go ahead and do that uh, right on launch as well. Um, we also got an email from the the devs shortly after saying they have like avatars and themes on the way and there's some other cool stuff that's coming down the pipeline and they've opened up the forums of their that were previously beta forums to everybody now so um, you can hop in there and let them know what you think of it. I got into the beta but it was PC only mm, so I didn't yeah, play it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, five games this week. Big, big week for VR. I mean, February in general is going to be a big month for VR. We still have Moss and a couple other things to go. Uh, but yeah, Cubeworks, Drunken Bar Fight, Knockout League, Pop-Up Pilgrims, and Sprint Vector all released this week. Let us know what you think if you've played any of these games, and we will review the ones that we have and get back to you. All right, so moving right along then to news. Um, so... Uh, yesterday, I believe, the Moss devs uh, decided, Polyarch, decided to throw out some new gameplay uh, for PlayStation Underground. Uh, Two days the- ago. Was it two days ago? Two days okay. ago. Um, so basically, it was only about 15 minutes or so, but they, they partnered up with PlayStation Underground, and uh, they had those guys play some more gameplay. So if you are interested, obviously it's behind, but um, you can check the link as well. There's a, actually like an entire blog article uh, like about the game as well as the gameplay, as well as um, an iOS sticker pack. Uh, so if you're familiar with iPhone stickers, there's uh, now Quill stickers that you can get, and also Wall papers for pretty much every uh, tablet and or phone in existence. Also, they said that there will be some kind of like variant of the stickers coming to uh, Android phones as well, whatever those guys use for, for that. I don't know. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're working on that too. So they kind of just like they they said, hey, we got a huge announcement coming in 40 minutes on Twitter. And then like tw- 40 minutes later, there's like a blog post, new gameplay, stickers, wallpaper, uh, all this fun stuff. And um, it's great. So, so yeah, Moss is gaining steam for the release this month and uh, I'm excited about it and you're kind of like you're kind of mad that you can't play it because of the snake right it's a give out love yeah I just can't play because my fear of snakes what's what's really you like, fought through your fear of snakes for Assassin's Creed man but that's not virtual reality that's true you know how scared I am in VR. But it's still like a pl- it's still a 3D platform. Doesn't matter. It's not like it's first person there's a snake. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's still in front of me. Kind of. No it is. I saw the video. Trust me. Okay. I saw the video. All right. So that's Even the video shame, I guess, for for for. But no, I, this is we always we always talk about like indie developers marketing being questionable at times. This is a really good marketing plan they got going. Oh, they've yeah. got they've got the blog post, which granted not everybody can have a blog post, but Sony, good on them for doing that. Hooking up with the people from Sony, uh, Clements, and I can't remember who the other person was is doing it with them from Sony. Uh, iOS sticker packs and eventually Android sticker packs, wallpapers. Like, this is something. There's to, other stuff in that you store, wanna, too. Yeah, you want to permeate outside yeah. of just the game. Like, how do you get into it? And people don't, people buy collector's editions, all this kind of stuff. But this is the stuff. Like, I downloaded Overwatch uh, wallpapers recently because I wanted to put Overwatch on my phone. Like, I do that every so often where I just want a new one. And this is like, oh, maybe I can put this on my phone. Mm-hmm. And more, more, I think more devs should do this because it. It brings just more attention to your brand. And even if somebody doesn't have PSVR, they'll know the name Moss. So if somewhere down the road they get PSVR, they will know Moss. They had some cute uh, some cute little Quill uh, emotion thingies they were showing off as well. Like apparently if you wave at Quill in-game, she will wave back to you, uh, which is kind of cool. And we already know previously from talking about Moss that she knows sign language as well, apparently. So uh, some, so they, they just really have done a great job with this game, I think. And everyone so far that's got their hands on it, including those of you that have played the demo, just know that this should be a special title when it releases. So we're really excited for Moss. 
Moss, and congratulations to Polyarch for doing it right. Uh, the other game that should be releasing a little later in the year, although it is already up on the PS Store, which is weird as a as a sort of a well, it's, it's supposed to be a pre order, but there's mm-hmm. nothing on there. It's just like you know when sometimes they have a game up there and there's just like nothing. There's no yeah. pre order. There's no price. That's, tag that's what happened. This, that's what happened this morning when I went to go buy Sprint Vector. It mm-hmm. hadn't updated yet, and it just it had the games. It had all the new releases, but I couldn't see prices. I was like yeah, I didn't want to buy this because I was going to play it before I came over here, but I couldn't get it done in time. So uh, the persistence is the game we're talking about. It has an official release date. And it's July 24th. So you do have to wait a little bit more time to get your hands on The Persistence. Uh, the Persistence, of course, was the other uh, game that was in the demo pack, Demo Pack 2, one of the newer games. And uh, it's a procedurally generated horror game um, where your friends could fuck with you, uh, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But there is a 10% discount if you do pre order it on the PSVR store. Now, the second screen feature is something that I wanted to talk about a little bit with that because. Um, <laughs> This is funny. I just opened up my thing and like I was watching uh, uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story last night. And there's like this clip at the end where they show the real Dewey Cox, but it's not Dewey Cox. It's still John C. Riley. And I was like, is there a real Dewey Cox? So that's my my search history is stupid. Wow. You need to watch that movie. It's good. Anyway, The Persistence uh, has a second screen feature where your friends can quite literally uh, fuck with you during the game. So this is something that I was kind of wanting to talk to you about. Um, you want me to fuck with you? Because I can do that. That's kind of what I was thinking. So friends can join locally on a tablet or a smartphone, hacking into the ship's engineering system and controlling many functions to help the main player. They can unlock doors, disable traps, and lure enemies. As they help, they level up and gain new skills. Sometimes those new skills come at a cost, and that cost is Eater. By creating and controlling enemies, the person controlling the Solex engineering system can kill Eater and gain new powers for themselves. At least in space, no one can hear you scream at your former best friend. So, um, would you play a horror game if all you had to do was use a second screen to mess with me? I w- I'm not playing it then. I'm just playing on my phone. Mm. So, yeah, I'll do anything to fuck with you. <laughs> except. Sounds like we have a new Let's Play series. Except sna- <laughs> stare snakes in the face. Yeah, there's no, there's there's no, no snakes. snakes in the, this I game. I can do zombies, but I can't do snakes. Okay. So, yeah, so that's a neat idea, right? I mean, that's, I mean, I know it's been done before to an extent, but I think in, in the virtual world, I don't think it has. So, uh, the persistence from what we saw of it was an interesting looking game. The demo was pretty fun. It was a little generic, but it was a demo, so I'm not too, you know, I'm not I mean, too the only second it. screen experiences that I can think of in VR right now are uh, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes. Mm. You have the manual. And you also have um, what's the, I can't think of the diner name of the diner game right now diner duo dash or something like that it's not diner dash because diner dash is the ios game but something like that diner Diner duo Duo, yeah uh that one and that's pretty much it the thing oh then technically uh dick wild has a second screen thing but don't do anything with it yeah yeah like the tv screen versus the vr screen yeah um so yeah so that's um that's pretty cool i think that the uh the second screen implementation there if you didn't know about that with the persistence if you only played the demo and haven't really read much about it um that is something that you will be able to do is mess with your friends um now this one actually has me a little bit on edge um gorgeous survival game the forest is finally getting a vr mode have you played or seen anything about the forest i have and it kind of scares me because it's not known for being the smoothest running experiences correct so uh it's a survival game uh you are in the woods and you, build shit. you have to build shit uh to try and kind of keep yourself alive but then of course being as it's a survival game there's things that you have to survive uh, aside from the elements and they are very creepy uh forest monsters i guess is the best way to put it uh kind of like a little bit like clickers from the the last of us people. I thought. but um yeah they look kind of a little bit they're people weirded but um yeah so they're uh, people too Tom. the far <laughs> Shush. The, <laughs> the Forest is getting a VR update now. Uh, there is a PS4 version of the game on the way, which of course means that distinctly there may be a PSVR version that goes along with it. Um, there is no confirmation of that. I just wanted to throw it out there because I thought The Forest is an interesting enough game that has enough kind of coverage already um, that some of you guys might be interested in the fact that it has a VR update coming to it. Um, this is one of those games that I don't know how comfortable I would be doing it in VR because I don't like building games at the best of time mm-hmm. uh, times, but uh, this game looks super fucking terrifying to me. I would definitely try it, uh, but I don't know how much I'd be able to enjoy it because of kind of how on edge I would be for most of it. 
Um, spoken enjoy. like a true horror aficionado, right? Um, so there is another game that's coming soon to uh, PlayStation VR next month, actually, and that is called Time Carnage. So the developers of Time Carnage, uh, Wales Interactive, have released a bunch of screenshots showing uh, different kind of things that you might run yourself up against in the game. Um, so as far as what you're going to be running up against, let's talk zombies and dinosaurs and uh, robots and... Uh, just a whole array of enemies, and the kind of interesting part about it is that I'm assuming that you're going to be hopping around time a little bit here uh, in the game. So, um, for those of you that don't know uh, about Wales Interactive, they did the uh, Don't Knock Twice game that was on VR uh, last year, and uh, honestly, for as much shit as that game got, it was well put together. Like, it really was. It was uh, environmentally interesting, the graphics were fine, the movement was fine, I enjoyed it, I thought it was spooky. Um, so it's interesting that they're kind of taking it on. But uh, so basically, Time Carnage, you're a trophy hunter that travels through time to wreak havoc in worlds swarming with zombies, monsters, robots, dinosaurs, armed with an arsenal of over 25 spine shattering guns, flamethrowers, and time stopping detonators. Uh, and there's a 16 tier campaign that you can go through as well. Uh, there's additional gameplay modes, you've got a custom arcade mode, um, all kinds of fun stuff that they're going to pack into that. So I thought it was kind of neat. Um, I don't know how it's going to turn out but uh it's interesting that they've uh they finally released a bunch of like screenshots not gameplay mm -hmm. but screenshots of um of kind of what you're going to be facing would you play this mm. no why I just, no i just it doesn't look like a game i would like fair enough as dumb as that it like they, I, it looks like a gallery shooter especially well especially in vr like i'm i've said it many many, many times i'm tired of scary i'm tired of space and i'm starting to get tired of shooters unless it's like a tactical shooter. You're like I'm tired be... of wave based, stand there, point and shoot. I'm more like, let me. I'm to the point where I want to start moving. Like Farpoint to me is a shooter, but it's different than every other shooter that's been on PSVR so far because every other shooter has been stand here, take your aim or your moves and shoot. Don't move. I think you're so. going to be a fan of my question at the end of the show today. I've not. Um, I haven't looked at it yet. I know. So I think you're going to be sneak? a fan of it. Uh, sneak a peek if you want. Sure. Uh, so Arc Park releases additional details um, about that. I know you're not super pumped on this, but these are some cool, uh, interesting factoids that I thought I'd drop on everybody. Uh, there are some key features exploring a variety of maps without a linear storyline. So that's good. Um, collect eggs and incubate them to raise your own little dinosaurs. Uh, find materials such as dinosaur DNA and trade them to craft useful items and more powerful weapons. Defend the park and its vital technology from rampaging dinosaurs across six distinct levels. Revisit the dinosaurs from the popular title Ark Survival Evolved. Uh, and then on top of that, there's some additional highlights. Exploration. Tour distinctive primal environments solo or with a group of friends. These excursions can be relaxing and challenging at the same time. Step into the tropical rainforests, snow-covered mountains, and expansive plains, along with the dinosaurs that call these habitats home. Gene collecting. Visitors may collect gene cubes from the many extinct creatures during excursions. However, collecting all of them can be challenging due to the reclusive habits of particular species. Determined visitors will need to use a combination of puzzle solving, exploration, and careful resource management to bag the most prized animals. The gene cubes are necessary for unlocking blueprints, which can then be used to craft tools, lures, items, and weapons dinosaur breeding incubate the eggs you collect and raise your own little dinosaurs gather food to keep them fed and watch them and watch your web page crash watch as you're trying to grow. talk about it <laughs> thank you um watch them grow you may also spray paint your dinosaur using the war paint system from arc survival evolved nothing beats the feeling of going on dinosaur rides as your baby dinosaur grows into adulthood combat in story mode something goes wrong with the park's brain wave device resulting in herds of rampaging dinosaurs everywhere you and your friends must defend the base and other humans with custom made weaponry including a selection of melee and ranged weapons along with other highly effective combat items swords spears pistols scatter guns and grenades will be available at launch multiplayer gameplay excursions are much easier to complete when players can brainstorm and search for secrets together more difficult hunting maps require close collaboration and teamwork for the best results arc park march 22nd is the release for that and uh i personally am that, more excited after reading this I was say that sounds so good but everything else else i've seen from the game scares me like you can make things sound good i this is this is one of those games that I could I could end up liking. Mm. 
if they do it right because I loved Ark so much and that's why I want to go to this game. Like, Ark, what I loved about Ark, Survival Evolved, is two things. One, uh, obviously playing with friends, as you know, I'm is a big part, so multiplayer is cool here. Two is building a base and, and kind of having my own collection of dinosaurs and you could, like you can here, you can breed them, you can uh, make pens, you can hunt things down, you'll get hunted. Like, you're never really, like, 100% safe from uh, from creatures and beasties out there. But, like... I don't know. I, I want the, the exploration mode is the coolest part. Like that to me is what Ark was. It's like there was a goal. There's goals in Ark to do to get to the final pillar and do the do the story. But what I did 99% of the time was we just hang out with friends and just wander around an area of dinosaurs and tame them or track them or kill them or whatever it may be. Like that I kind like of thing. the idea of hunting uh, reclusive dinosaurs. I like that when they mention that there's some that are going to be like harder to find because of their breeding habits or whatever. Like they're going to be sort of tucked away and you have to use teamwork and things like that well, to like, actually find the location. That's like in original, in original Ark, there were certain things that mean certain biomes and some of the biomes are real hard to get to. Mm. So, so yeah. like a plesiosaur, not easy. You don't want to fuck with that thing. <laughs> it will kill you quickly. So, has this got you a little bit more excited? I need to see. Game? I need to see footage of it. Okay, that's where I'm at at this point. So, yes, I'm more excited I than the story I was before. Was good that they released the cinematic. That's, but I need to see gameplay. Okay. Like I'm. That's that's. This sounds good. It sounds great on paper, and I've learned to not hype things up because whenever I do it goes bad I feel like I have low expectations to be blown away then have expectations and not be I feel like the met. biggest thing to be worried about here is the the implementation of movement yes I feel like if they get the movement down everything else sounds great um so we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with Ark Park, but we won't have to wait too long since it is out next month. But just so you know, like, that is a ton of information that dropped on Ark Park. And for those of you that would only ever seen the cinematic trailer like me and, and you, uh, that should give you a little bit more hope that this is going to turn out the way that everyone kind of wanted it to. Um, I don't think they were ever going to really be able to take Ark Survival Evolved and just flip it to VR. So as long as they can get some of the elements of that game and implement them here in a Like I said, the, craft, the crafting of a, of a base was one of my... Like, you you said this is my home and you the coolest part was to figure out where to build because some places were more dangerous than others but there's also lucrative places to be so like we would build there's there's a river that goes right through the middle of the island and we built right on that riverbank there's alpha t-rexes that will destroy you in one hit on the other side but we were so close to a bunch of natural resources that we decided it's best place to be we just had our big beasties up front and did that so that's that's one thing i want this to have is some sort of like give you this is my home because you're defending things but what you're you haven't you defending really the mentioned park? What are you much defending? about like building a homestead but like there's a lot of other elements of it there so it's just going to kind of be yeah a wait and see it right? sounded more and more like arc now after right. that than it did before yeah good all right so um if you have been watching us for a while you may or may not know that one of our most highest watched uh viewed videos of all time that is was real bad english called, i know uh <laughs> is called Physical versus digital, a couch conversation. Uh, back when we had really? couch conversations, yep, uh, instead of podcasts. And uh, physical versus digital, of course, referring to the medium in which you purchase a game. Now, I think it's VR, funny because you flipped. I did flip. If you watch that, I was all physical. <laughs> Now I'm Let's all digital. Get physical, uh, but then again, digital. back then there wasn't a uh, four terabyte extended hard drive uh, hmm. option, so I've, that was why I largely need, went you don't need that. physical. But um, so Just buy less games. He, yeah, <laughs> I really need to. I so, told you. Uh, so the good news is uh, that PSVR doesn't do physical a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say. Which right? is, there's a reason I think that they don't. I do. I think I think the main reason is the swapping of the games there's, while you're in I think there's set. two. I think there's two reasons. One, swapping of games. And two, it costs to manufacture a game versus a digital license. Right. There's no production cost going into box and packaging. So a game has to, has to have like an inbuilt fan base or be highly anticipated or have a AAA company behind it before usually it's going to get a, a physical release. Of course, mm -hmm. Skyrim got one and Star Wars. Star, Resident Evil. Star Trek. Sorry. Star Trek got one. Resident Evil I mean, Star one. Wars did too. Uh, Job Simulator got one. One, um, technically, Star Wars did until too. Dawn. St yeah, Star Wars. Technically, Star technically. Wars. Technically, um, so there's two games that are actually getting physical releases that have already been mm -hmm. digital uh, for a hot second, and one of them you won't be surprised by. The other one you might be. Um, the first is going to be 
Super Hot VR. Super Hot gets its retail release on February 28th. Now, this is from the European PlayStation blog, so I do not know if it'll be the exact same for the North American. However, I that imagine... That means game's going to have it. I think it will be. Yeah, game will have it if, you, if you're in the it's UK. Game stop. Oops. What up, peeps? Uh, so, yeah. So, physical release of Super Hot, which is exciting. Um, I assume with that, they'll have the flat game as well as the VR version. I don't know for sure, but I would imagine that's going to so. happen. Um, and of course there is the Control Alt Delete uh, DLC that's coming out pretty soon as well Uh, I don't think that's VR but I'm not sure Um, so that's exciting the second and more interesting to me was Arizona Sunshine is going to get a full physical release for PSVR on March 21st so a little bit later um, three weeks or so after but do you think this is uh, the start of a new trend where you get these kind of games that did particularly well digitally and then uh suddenly the company be like hey maybe we should do a physical like what why would they do this i guess is the question I two have. two reasons oh business hat time get it on business hat number one so the the first reason is visibility so mom dad <laughs> <laughs> i was like just staring at you mom dad go to game GameStop, mm. video game store mom and pop crop shop um that's from kind of funny okay. they go to they go to a video game store and they're looking to buy their kids a the games because most parents either buy a gift card for said console platform so psn xbox live whatever switch nintendo nintendo eShop, or steam mm. or they buy them a game mm. if mom and dad see a psvr game inside of game gamestop or mom and pop crop shops i love that phrase by the way <laughs> now i'm stealing it um if they if they have that it's more visibility for them, which theoretically they'll get more impulse, quote unquote impulse sales or more sales that they wouldn't have otherwise that mom and dad, because mom and dad aren't searching the digital stores. Granted, they obviously have to have the PSVR already, but if you're buying somebody a Christmas present and you're buying them PSVR, obviously I think you should buy the one with the with the VR Worlds or some sort of bundle that already has a game. But if you're not, say you're just buying the headset and you're buying a game with it, you're more likely to buy a game at the time of purchase than you are to go buy a game digitally if it is a present. Or just like include a gift card yes. with the purchase. Yes. Or, or it's more special to give somebody something versus a code. That's fair. Um, so I think that's that's reason number one is visibility to the not core audience, but the people who buy games for people who are potentially the core audience. So I'm thinking like, the because you can't be under 12 and play PSVR, but the 12 to like which, by the way, is the most broken rule in existence. Yeah. There's so many yes. videos of kids playing video 12 games. to, like, 17, 18 years old that are still with their parents. They may not have their own income, but they play video games a lot like we did back in the day. Uh, the other thing, I think, is it's also injecting sales back into a game that, again... May previously have gone unnoticed. Had Well, it had them already, but it just it's a second... That's like when you put a game on sale. Do you it think, gives a second life to that game. Do you think some of it is to do with the online aspect of it as well? Because like, if, you, if you're buying a digital game, you have to have online. But these games are both offline. They're both single player. So you could buy it and play it without having to have a internet connection. Yes and no. Uh, you still have to do patches and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There's always... You have there's, to, but yeah. I mean, most games may require you to do a patch to play them at this point. That's true. To have all the details. Yeah. So, I think I don't you know. can do patches without PS Plus, though. No, yeah, but you have to have an internet connection to download them. That's true. That's what I'm saying. So just because you don't have PS Plus doesn't mean you don't have an, you have to have an internet connection. So like that could be as well. But I think it's more of it. It's kind of like a second release for the game, mm. even though a lot, they don't expect almost to be like big. re-releasing indie games on Switch. Yeah, or yeah. I don't know, doing a, a collect. I don't know, Skyrim Collector's Edition or mm. something, or Skyrim Ultra Mega Awesome 4K. <laughs> holy crap! You got to buy this on your phone edition. All the editions. So that it just it just brings another sales cycle back into the company. Um, I don't think either of these games were hurting for sales. Uh, Arizona Sunshine, like you said, was is question question. I still haven't played this yet, and I really want to because um, right now, allegedly, this is this is okay. Better. It's pretty yeah. good. Uh, but when it At initially launch, it launched, was, yeah, it was yeah, a, it was kind of rocky. Hot but super hot VR. Me and you both have said it's like a no brainer. You've got to buy it. Five so. PSVR game. But yeah, I think this. I think this is more of. It's weird because to me, VR will always be digital because I buy all my games. But mm. if my parents were to buy me a game like a physical game, they would get it from a store and the best place to get a game is from a physical store. And you can see, again, mom's going to buy son for his birthday a VR game or going to buy a PlayStation game. She sees this PSVR game. Oh, he has PSVR. Maybe I should buy this one instead of that because it sounds cooler. Hmm. Maybe he gets cool points. Who knows? The other thing I'd like to throw out there, because I know we have generally a more mature audience than some of the other shows that are out there. 
if you are a mom or dad, uh, if you're that, more mature, that is buying <laughs> games and stuff for your kids. Is my business hat right? Just so you know, uh, kids don't give a shit about having digital codes. Like, I know that you feel like you want them to have a physical purchase, but me and you, like, if someone were like, here's a $50 PSN card, we're not going to give a shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one cares. They love that. Trust me. You're okay with that if you want to do that. But it is nice that you're seeing some <laughs> PSVR. Right there, buddy? My Red Bull went down the wrong hole. <laughs> if you see some, uh, so get, see some PSVR games, more PSVR games, get physical releases. I'm always a fan of it uh, because to me it's, it means the medium is growing in, in an appropriate manner. And it's, more, and, it's a uh, good marketing strategy theoretically for the platform. It's a good marketing strategy. Because right, right now when you, walk into, when you walk into a video game store, Video game. Let's go. Let's go. GameStop because that's the last. I've not been to Best Buy in last years. Uh, you go. You go to. You go to the GameStop. The one we. The one I go to to my left. There's Nintendo, and then there's PlayStation, and then on the right there's Xbox, and then there's something else. I don't know. The weird stuff they do now. The Think Geek <laughs> stuff. But when you go in to see, look at the PlayStation stuff, like I'll go in there and just browse games because a they're cheaper because that's the other thing you can get them pre-owned mm. potentially down the road. I mean that's really. Old. The majority like, of GameStop's business at this like point I don't is I don't games. I don't sell games back, but you used to all the time. Mm-hmm. I know people who do, and again, we I don't want to say we have disposable income because that's not the right word, but we buy a lot of games, we play a lot of games, but we keep a lot of games versus the kids back in the day that maybe. Well, because we never know when we're going to have to drag them up again yeah. for something. Like we're doing, uh, we're going to be working on a pretty special couple PSVR compilation videos soon, and there's some older uh, Games PSVR titles up. that we're going to have to to drag out. So, yeah. But yeah, that but like for for the mom that wants to save money, you can get it pre-owned inside of GameStop, or if you can get, or the kid that can only get two games a year, mm. you're going to try and make your money last as long as you can. You get it in in that way. In. and you can also yeah. again the visibility thing is i think the for me is the biggest part of it trade it back in get three dollars buy yourself a candy bar <laughs> i don't know anyway unless uh, they do one of those deals they just go games they just did a trade-in thing for Looking good playstation pro for pro if you it was i think you got 250 for og i almost upgraded it was 250 for an og playstation go to a pro but i did I decided, I decided not to do it because i'm waiting for playstation 5 in 2020 i'll see you in a couple years uh <laughs> ultra wings devs confirm hotus support within a few weeks how much is a hotus because i want to play this game but i want to play with the flight stick hotus is HOTUS. in the region of 150 to 250 you can usually Ooh. find them on sale for like 180 because i want one because i feel like that'd be the best way to play this game because i'm holding off playing ultra wings even though i don't you know want what? to i'll say this uh r slash psvr our favorite forum uh, is really good at informing people when HOTUS is on sale. Um, I picked up a steering wheel, actually, uh, from a guy on there that was like, hey, this is a $350 steering wheel that is currently, like, 120 bucks or something. I picked that up purely you for You lied to me. This rally. one's 67 from from Amazon. The nice, the nice one... The nice ones are, like, 150 Is 100 No, they should be more than and that. And then they man. have pedals that can attach to I don't it. know if you're looking at the right ones. I'm looking at Amazon. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, HOTUS uh, support for Ultra Wings devs. Uh, here's what you got. Hopefully within the next two weeks uh, was the response from uh, from BitPlanet uh, when they were asked that question. And that's all they said. But, I mean, that's pretty sweet, right? Ultra Wings, by the way, those motherfuckers, those devs, Mwah, to you, the updates for Ultra Wings. This has been like one a week since it's come out. I need it, like I said, I need to play it. Stuff. It's an incredible game. Um, so for those of you that have been waiting for that patch, uh, it is on its way, guys. Uh, Sorrento VR Dev confirms PSVR release and a rough date. Um, so Sorrento, you may remember, it's kind of like a samurai shooter slash sword based gallery shooter. Uh, got a whole bunch of hype behind it on the Vive and uh, and the Rift. Uh, and the developer said uh, recently he went to r slash PSVR and said, "I am the Sorrento developer, and I would like to confirm that Sorrento VR is indeed planned for PSVR, hopefully by Christmas 2018." Uh, and he says, hope we make it, smiley face, in terms of, at least he has a sense of humor. That seems to be um, the, the thing with these is, you, once you're, I feel like PSVR, you're in Sony's hands, so it's a, a lot of things fall into Sony for getting approval and all that kind yeah, of stuff. So. Yeah, well, spe- actually, there's a, there's a sort of, a little bit about that later. Um, but yeah, so, so if you've been looking at Sorrento and you've sort of seen the people on Vive and, and uh, all those other ones play it and you're kind of excited about it, um, so... 
yeah, it should be it should be really interesting. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, so just I'm about one fifty for the whole <clears throat> Hodus setup, just so you know. Okay. With the pedals and the stick. I so was, speaking yeah. of um, also the the uh, uh, PlayStation. English. No, I'm skipping that. Uh, sp- speaking of uh, PlayStation, sort of quality control. Let's say that there's been a company that's been struggling <laughs> for quite a while now to get their game approved for a VR update, mm-hmm. uh, and that is the developers' uh, strange games behind Honor and Duty. Uh, we showed you a little clip, uh, a repeated clip, uh, 13 seconds, I think it was. Uh, the last over episode over, it gets longer, uh, and it looked cool. It looked really cool. Uh, I know that some of the more popular PSVR YouTubers have been playing the original version, trying to kind of gain a feeling for it. It is a cheap as fuck game. Uh, the original is only it usually goes on sale for like two dollars, but it's like seven fifty maybe for the for the the, the flat game. But they are going to do a VR version, and here's the official uh, word on it from Strange Game Studios. The Honor and Duty PSVR update officially passed QA today. This update adds both PSVR and AIM controller support. Our rep reached out to us and offered to coordinate some extra marketing for the update. We're tentatively set to release on the 13th of February. I missed it. Yep, that was was yesterday. Uh, Two days ago. And they'll do some marketing and or a banner on the store to announce the update. This should drive more players to the game so there'll be more players for multiplayer. We're supposed to get confirmation on Monday about the release date, so check back or follow them on Twitter. Um, I'm going to so, do a quick Twitter search right now to make sure there's no updates that we missed. Yeah. Sorry you guys didn't make the the supposed release date, but that does mean that, I mean, if they if they were aiming for this week and they missed it, then I assume it means it'll be out in the next week or two, I, w- I would think. Um, but yeah, those guys, um, God bless them. They've been trying so hard to do this. And, and here's what I really liked about Strange Games is that every time they got denied uh, their VR update, they would post uh, a really kind of nice technical um, response as to why it didn't pass and they would say like oh there was this thing that was going on or this bug or we were told we had to change this thing so you knew exactly why it was taking as long as it was to try and get this VR update off the ground so really happy for them to to pass QA Um, but obviously they missed their date so uh, hopefully uh, it'll be out relatively soon and it sounds like Another post they have was potentially not coming to Europe because of Peggy. And oh, Icost that was Indies. yeah, the Peggy thing. I saw that too. So they had some issues with classification in, uh, with Peggy, uh, which, which is, is the ESRB of Europe. Yeah, for those of you um, know. Peggy eighteen. You may. I always try. Yeah, I always try to figure out what that was. God, that makes so, so much. <laughs> once I figured it out, I was like, ah. So so yeah. So um, good on those guys. Looking forward to it. The clip looked great. Let's hope the full game is great. Uh, if it's past Q and A from uh, from Sony, then I'm I'm sure it will. Uh, so let's talk about Rec Room. Uh, we played a little bit of Rec Room uh, a week or two ago, right? And it was uh, fly to, fly, fly to uh, uh, We played the flight rooms, yeah, which was really great, by the way. Flying in Rec Room is fucking awesome. Bertrand got super sick. Yeah, he did, did not like it. Yeah, he's like I couldn't do anything. I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, yeah, but you also don't get motion sick. So let's talk about her. Let's talk about your featured rooms for this week. Miura Park. Uh, so that's a Zelda-based room. Are. Of course, the mas- uh, Mask of Miura. Uh, the USS Coach, uh, which looks like the, the I guess, I mean, I, sp- I suppose it's like a real plane landing pad. But it looks like the one from the Avengers. I don't know if that's really what it is or not. But uh, there you go. You got the giant room where everything is just like super large for some reason. It's called an aircraft carrier, by the way, Tom. Thank USS you. Coach. Thank you. Uh, jumbo map, which is just a big old uh, room with lots of stuff going on in it. Fun games at park, um, which has like basketball and a couple other things going on in there. Uh, this one's really exciting for me. Xeno Queen. Yes, it's an alien inspired custom room with, of course, a Xeno Queen in there. Ace Huggers, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then we have Pac Man Maze, uh, which looks pretty exciting. Uh, lots of cool stuff going on there. Ooh. Survival Base, um, Castle Land, Castle Land, Halo Reach. Uh, I'm sure you'll like that one. 
indoor park, volcano, uh, volcano and unfulfilled <laughs> dreams. And teleport device. Um, which is kind of AKA uh, TARDIS. interesting. I'm assuming that's a reference to a TARDIS at the bottom there. I love that uh, that they do this, that they I, have these custom rooms. It was a lot of fun exploring these rooms when we played. Yeah, yeah, that's so... One of the things we I blue, blue, English. One of the things that like with this, and I said I think it was two weeks ago or last episode was the community is going to make these this thing go, and everybody so far in the community loves Rec Room as far as I can tell. People who play it, there's been there's been a couple cases that people like I don't understand the hype, which happens. I think it's the kids that are putting people off. Yes, because it's a free game. So you can all the kids downloaded it. You it's, can also though go in and there's a check mark to prefer to be. Not with people under eighteen. Really? Yeah, I turned that shit on immediately. I didn't know that. I'm gonna yeah. have to do that. I don't the remember. Kids what the, do I don't, drive me mad I don't know what the bit. setting is, but the, but you have to assume they're not playing on their parents' account because if the parents are over eighteen, then they'll mm. still be on it. So that's kind of bet you the the caveat there. Until but I turned that shit on immediately, yeah. and I've I've not had to. I had a couple where there's still kids because it can't. It doesn't guarantee. Most uh, so, but, and this is not a knock on kids because some of them are really cool. We played like, with a couple kids. We played charades, we doing charades, and we had a great time. Um, but generally speaking, I think people of our own age kind of are more inclined to play like the games properly and, and yes. uh, have better conversation. Um, but it's a penis. That's our conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's a penis we, with glasses. To be fair, uh, to be fair, we do what? act like 12-year-olds Squidward. sometimes when we're online. But uh, it was a good time. But we're not fucking your mother. Uh, we're definitely not not doing that to her. <laughs> Hi, Miss whoever you are um so has a name. so rec room of course if you haven't tried it try it it's free you're stupid if you don't uh Whoa. but it is a great time it is it is probably like games to get it's no brainer because it's free mm. and it's still beta so i'm interested to see when it goes 1.0 what it's going to be mm. which is weird because and they're continually adding things to yes it. they have the pirate thing that's coming out here soon the custom rooms they change every week and they i had we did have them. we did if you go into custom rooms, though, I do want to give you a heads up that there potentially will be lag. There potentially will oh, yeah. be glitches going on. We had I had called the eye shakes, where my thing was just going like this the whole yeah, time. Yeah, when you when so it gets be aware laggy of that. in rec room, it does make you. That's the only time I got nauseous. Actually, was when it was like shaking yeah. back and forth, and I felt like I was having convulsions. That was super weird. So if you do go in these custom rooms, just be aware that that is potentially a thing that'll happen. That's not your headset having issues. That is the game freaking. Because at first I thought it was me. I was like, why is my tracking weird? And then it, you guys were like, no, mine's doing it too. I was like, cool. But they are cool to look at. Uh, Downward Spiral Horror Station is announced for PSVR. Um, Horus, that is, not horror, sorry. Um, and this is one that you shared with me. Looks interesting. Sony kind of was harping on about it a little bit. Uh, it's your standard space VR deal. Uh, looks kind of dead spacey, um, but I assume nowhere near as terrifying. And uh, so, if you're a sci-fi fan, you've been, you know, you like. If you haven't your, had enough space yet. If you haven't had enough space sci-fi games going on, then this is a good one to take a look at. Uh, it does look beautiful. It does actually look like the graphical fidelity of it will be really interesting if they can pull it off correctly. But yeah, dude, it's a space station sort of shooter scenario situation. Uh, you can see some of the footage behind. Um, but check out the full trailer if you are interested in it. it looks kind of cool. And uh, for those of you that are into to sci-fi, then it'll be a good time. Alongside that, if you're if uh, fantasy is more your thing, then we have in depth medieval bow shooter that's in the works for PSVR. Um, I feel like bow and arrows are like super fucking popular in VR. I guess just because everyone this. likes the gesture of doing that, you know, I'm feeling like Legolas or whatever. Well, I wonder. I wonder if it's also more accurate to do this from a tracking standpoint than it is to have a gun up here. I wonder. Yeah, because you have to remember the mask is here, so you hold a gun up, mm. and you, you whack yourself. Unless you have the aim. You still will potentially hit your helmet. But um, yeah, so the uh, this is this looks interesting. Again, it's uh, you know medieval bow and arrow, so it, it's a very particular type of bow and arrow. It's not just the like a lot of the the current games that are out there that that use those utensils. Uh, they utensils a bow and arrow utensil, <laughs> like it's like a fork and spoon. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so this one again looks interesting. Uh, recently announced as as coming to PSVR. Uh, footage behind. Full trailer in the comments. You know the situation. Uh, Wipeout VR update. Now, this is, uh, take this with a fucking grain of salt. Uh, basically, we, I, I was looking around and looking for more information on the Wipeout VR update that supposedly is uh, hitting us here pretty soon. And um, the developers gave a time frame. Uh, they gave a really shitty time frame. Well, they so, based on the guy's question. Here's what they said. Uh, yeah, the guy said, can we expect to see it before June? Was uh, Well, he said, excited over in impatient. Wipeout VR fan here. Any news for the patch at all this month? Next before June. Thanks for the hard work. And the dev said, 
yes before June. <laughs> Still not saying when, though. Uh, Kiss no, emoji. He said, yes before June, cry face, cry face, cry face. That's laughing. Cry laughter face, sorry. Still not saying when, though. Kissy face. So uh, we can expect to see it, I think, pretty soon. I think this is one they're going to snap on us, and it's just going to be like, boom, here it is. Deal with it, fucker. I don't think so. You don't think so? You think they're going to wait all the way till this- like, uh, April? This will be, well, it's not going to be February, because February's packed. What's coming out in March? There's a couple games coming out in March. There's quite a few coming out in so, March. Bravo April. team. Timing-wise, it makes sense. I, I don't think it matters, because it's, uh, even though there's a bunch of stuff coming out, it doesn't mean you can't update a previously existing game. Remember, this is an update. This isn't yeah. a new game. Yeah. But so still. it's not like it's it's not like people have to choose between this or that. Yeah, but... If they already own Wipeout, they're just getting this as an update. Yeah, but Which I do when you're playing in VR, yeah, you do. But when playing when playing in VR, though, like for them to get eyeballs, because if you do an update, and nobody realizes the update came out for VR at that time, mm-hmm. or if there's something else drawing your attention away. Like if they released the same day, the same day Moss came out, just hypothetically, mm-hmm. Moss would dominate the headlines, and nobody would care about Wipeout VR. Fair. If this came out by itself on a day, or when there's other smaller games that have come out, it'll dominate the headlines, and it'll go, oh yeah, the the Wipeout VR update is out. Play it now, mm-hmm. and it'll it'll do the ripple effect. Fair. And also, I've not looked at like AAA games that are coming out earlier this year. Uh, but everything's going to be pushing back later and later and later. So Bravo's cool. still all scheduled. Well, for I'm talking about just March. just normal like PlayStation games as well because right. you got to keep those. Even though we're talking about PSVR, you do have to realize people still play flat flat games, so you got to take do those they? into account. I play way more flat games than I do VR now. Yeah, yeah. you're you're going back and forth. Your ebbs and ebbs yeah. and flows for you. Uh, but there's because I'm playing the crap out of GTA. Finish the Doomsday Heist. Uh, another new game that was announced. I think uh, this is exciting for me specifically because it's UK. Uh, Hammerhead announced Stein, a VR game solving cold cases throughout British history. We're really pleased to introduce Stein, our new VR game thriller solving cold cases throughout British history. Stein was uh, selected as part of the Creative XR program and will be pushing the boundaries of volumetric capture to bring the characters to life in this new title. Throughout the development, keep an eye out for stuff we share, including concept art, character development, environments, and a demo. Uh, So it looks like they're trying to go the kind of uh, L.A. Noir vibe of actually trying to get some seriously good mocap in there for... um, I guess for uh, the cold cases. Now, when you think about cold cases in British history, um, Grim Reaper. Technically, Jack the Ripper is a cold Grim case. Reaper. Um, you said the Grim Reaper. Yeah, I don't think that's a. <laughs> that's not even a real thing. Uh, uh, so. the, the the plague. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, well, no, we solved that. It was rats. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was solved. But yeah, like Jack the Ripper was one. Of course, there was uh, many Quasi- other Quasimodo. Um, <laughs> he was like Rome or something. Get out of here. It's um, Europe. Oh wait, did it say you? I love crime. It said British. Damn it. Uh, I love Britain. Don't don't take that quote out of t- context. I love crime. If I'm ever on a, a I love dock. I love British things. I I lo- yes to those two things. I love VR. Yes. Uh, but I no, love but Keegan. Me and my wife are super like heavy crime TV show. Watchers, I'm excited to get this crime this crime stuff. VR game board game that we're supposed to be getting here shortly. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I don't know um, what we're getting. It should be any week now. But I'm really excited uh, about this because obviously it's nice to 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 play any game that's kind of based in my home country. But also um, just just like the idea of being a detective solving cold cases. I love that shit. Like that's all that I watch on TV is me and my wife were obsessed in, in, in cold case shows and in like crime thrillers and all that kind of stuff. So this to me is super exciting, which is why I sort of put it more towards the end of the list, because I think this is going to be a really big deal. Uh, I will say that it sounds like they're in uber early development on it. Um, but, I'm still really excited for it. So that's a sort of a, a first look for you or for Stein. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Are you sure it's, it's not Steen? Exciting. And lastly, Are you sure for it's our not Steen? news. Uh, it could be. I'm pronouncing it Stein because I'm British. It's a fucking British <laughs> game. So uh, lastly, uh, the last news that we have is kind of fun because it's us. We were in the news. We made the news, actually, uh, kind of. So um, Ace Combat 7 has a 10-minute VR demo that was available at Wizard World St. Louis and may even be traveling with Wizard World. We have no confirmation of that yet. But um, so Ace Combat 7, uh, obviously one of the more anticipated games coming to PSVR. And um, me and Keegan spent last weekend in uh, at Wizard World, St. Louis.
Lewis. Uh, we like to go to cons uh, and, and sort of have a good time there. So we went out there. And uh, you we freaked went, the fuck out. I was like, whatever. It's a game. I said it would be the biggest thing that we did during that weekend, and it turned out to be the biggest thing we did during yeah, that weekend. Yeah, but that's for other reasons, too. Uh, true. But um, so we, we get there, and we're, we're walking around like the, the, the video in, game yeah, area. Yeah, well, we're, we're in before the show starts. So we're yeah. just wandering, we kind of getting late. Let's be fair. I mean, we didn't snuck, sneak in. The guy said, One I of could, the guys didn't know we were supposed hey, to be there. Guy said thing. we could go in. We asked, hey, we're pressed. Can we go in? He said, yes. I go, hey, Tom, we can go in. Yeah. And we got it. That's why you always ask. You never know. If the person doesn't know, not our fault. We were allowed in by <laughs> someone go. that didn't know there that you we go. weren't allowed in. No, we were allowed uh, in by somebody. And. That uh, had a staff shirt. So we walked around uh, the v- uh, not the VR section, sorry, the um, the game, game section. And the game section is essentially just think of it as like a really long fucking table with, with a bunch of PlayStations on it and just like a bunch of fighting. And games. we use, uh, uh, yeah, and some we use weirdly enough. Uh, they for had, Smash, they had Smash. I suppose, yeah, they yeah. had Smash. They were all fighting games. It was all like Dragon Ball and Street Fighter and, and all that kind of stuff. Then at the end, off to the side, on its own little area we see a giant cardboard uh, cutout for Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown <clears throat> and a bunch of chairs, including a flight chair and PSVR headsets on top. And I lost my fucking mind because I was like, I was like Whatever. holy shit, like this is a game that no one knows anything about in VR yet. And here they are with a demo. We have like a backpack with an Elgato and a fucking laptop, and we have all of our setup. Those of you who don't know, an Elgato is a game capture device. Yes. We're, we're, we're uh, so finish. we're like, we might get we're like world's first gameplay of Ace Combat VR right now. So I stalked out the booth. Booth guy comes over. I went to go stalk out uh, our friend's Thousand Faces cosplay. Yes, you you went elsewhere, <laughs> but I was determined to get this gameplay footage. So booth guy comes up, and, and my camera just happens to be facing towards the booth, even though it's not even turned on or anything. It's just it's just the way I put it down, I guess. And um, he's like, are you filming right now? I said, no, sir. Uh, and he said, are you planning to film? And I said, I would love to capture some game footage. Uh, this is, you know, we host a PSVR podcast, and it'd be really great if we could... Uh, steal some of that there footage that you got there sir and uh he said no <laughs> he said no unequivocally no gameplay recording no over the shoulder recording no shooting the screen no shooting the screen at all we could only shoot the angle of us playing the game uh and have we could have like the cardboard shit in shot but we couldn't we couldn't have any gameplay any screen play in shot somebody thought our Post was Photoshop too. That yeah, was that was hilarious. So here's where the story gets interesting. So I take a picture of the booth when we first got there because I was excited. I posted it on Reddit. I'm like, this has just got interesting, right? And um, so we're while I'm waiting for this guy to show up, there's a lot of sort of hype and stuff that gets generated. And then I notice um, uh, that shortly, basically shortly after the. Uh, the experience we recorded our our thoughts directly to camera we both played it and as soon as keegan got out of the headset we went over to a different area recorded our initial thoughts uh edited it up posted it up that night uh as fast as we could and um that video suddenly started to get thousands of views and we were just like okay something's weird here because there's no gameplay footage in it so mm-hmm. i don't know what people and we well, like we say that openly at the beginning there will be no gameplay footage in this in this discussion uh we just wanted to tell you our thoughts and uh so we were kind of uh surprised and then we wondered where the fuck were all these views coming from and we noticed that one of the guys um that posts in our comment is a lovely gentleman by the name of ace combat fan um apparently ace combat fans kind of a big deal in the world of ace combat um 22,000 subscribers dude from uh canada right he's from he's french Canadian. So. and uh Super nice guy, by the way. Uh, so he posts asking us some questions about this because apparently, and I did not know this, the Ace Combat community is fucking hardcore. Like, yep. they love the shit out of that game. He has his niche. Oh, my God. Yeah. So they love this dude. They love Ace Combat. And we made their news. So there's there's the, the uh, picture of our um of our Instagram of post. our Instagram uh post and then uh, a link to our our conversation about it and he actually posted this entire post uh just talking about how there was an Ace Combat 7 virtual reality playable demo at St. Louis Wizard World that no one knew about and apparently the only people on the internet that uh knew that it existed were yours truly as of uh, as of right now it has 25 over 2500 views 47 comments 29 thumbs up 11 thumbs down i feel like those 11 thumbs down weren't for us though it's because 
because there was no nothing to show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like, so Bandai Nam- <laughs> Bandai Namco, uh, your fans are fucking rabid for this game and they love to know when this like this guy was legitimately and he says on the video I if I'd have known this was going to be here I would have booked a flight to St. Louis he lives in Canada so your fans are nuts uh, in the best possible way. Like you have some hardcore fans of your game. Uh, we got a ton of questions on like control scheme and like. And we the, gave all the information we had. Yeah, and we didn't have a lot. We only had our experience. Um, the good news is that for both of us, we fucking loved it. Uh, it instantly made our list of must buys. Uh, we well, I found out later. I found out later, and I don't think I told you this mm-hmm. yet. Fifteen hours of VR game. Okay, game. As yeah. that was my thing. Was how much VR? Was, yeah. So was, that's. That's the, that's the last me. measurement that we were told was that at least 15 hours of VR gameplay. Then it's a must buy. Uh, so yeah, so it's a must buy. The controls were great. No fucking nausea whatsoever. No motion sickness. Even on the barrel uh, rolls, which e- normally get me. Yeah, uh, both of us were absolutely fine. Because you can't, I can't use you to track motion sickness because you don't just do, you just don't get sick. That's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but if Keegan uh, Keegan gets sick going upstairs in Skyrim, so if he can play this game and barrel roll and not feel sick, you know it's a really well done. Uh, level of uh, immersion and um, so uh, great game really enjoyed it had a great time uh, just became a pickup for me just because the feeling of flying and you know dog fighting and stuff was just so uh, exhilarating and uh, we we became the news in the Ace Combat community because we were the only people on the internet that uh, apparently knew this demo existed so uh, I thought that would be fun to drop in as our last news comment that we uh, we broke some news for once that was uh, that was a really good time I might uh, have to, it doesn't have a release date, does it? it no, just, it just what I'm saying. It's December still, 31st, 2018, which is a placeholder for it's GameStop. Still very much up in the air, yeah. So, uh, so Dude, it's, cool. it's a it's it's a mess, must buy though. Like, yeah. So, I bitch a lot about games that are not made for me because I I'm like I don't care about the I don't. Care. This was a game that was made for me. This is a game that I love flying. I guess I love shooting shit too. Um, but like. You were getting really into yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. I like, was sat behind you for the majority of the video, and you kept going like, "Yeah," <laughs> whenever you took something down, and I was like, "Settle down." But. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like it was, it was, it's. I got lost in that game, and there's you get. Lo- I've got lost games before, and it's not the first time that that has happened. But like, that Star Trek and Rec Room, or pr- even Werewolves to a certain extent too. But Werewolves is a bit weird because you're talking to avatars, uh, especially when like when David's an avatar throws my brain off because I'm used to his voice being in a certain body and then his voice is coming out of a female and I'm like hold up <laughs> um, but like I could see myself kind of like do you Resident Evil I could have an I could easily assuming motion sickness doesn't come in at any point could play that for probably five six seven hours and just go through it mm-hmm. like it's one of those games that I feel like it's going to become my sit in and play game even if it's single player and you know how much I don't like single player experiences as much as multiplayer but that was so good the, the factor to me with it is going to be vehicle types, mission types. Hopefully it's not all the all the same thing, but I am. it is now on my list of, to buy day one as long as nothing bad comes out about it. Yeah. So so there you go. That's uh, our inside scoop on uh, Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown. We both played it, we both loved it, and we both highly, highly recommend you uh, picking it up at launch. Uh, assuming, of course, that nothing changes between demo and uh, and main game, I can only picture it getting better. You know, yeah. It's a demo, so it should it should potentially get better. But they could fuck up the the controls or mechanics really or something somehow. Um, but yeah, we made the news, so that's fun. Uh, so that's your news roundup for this week. Moving on to the spotlight, and it's a it's a special one, so stay around because this is a spotlight that is uh, something that we you may not have heard anything about, and if you're if you're like me, you just kind of would have stumbled across it out of nowhere, have no idea what it is uh so so stay tuned because it's actually a really really good game uh pupil wondering is the name of the game uh you will not find it on the north american store because pupil wondering is a uh, hong kong vr title now i play a lot of hong kong vr titles as you know because it's the only asian country that does uh english. games in english um summer lessons uh weird as fuck but a good game um for what it is Uh, A lot of the other games, Kaiji, um, Happy Drummers now had its North American release. Uh, Audio Beats was okay. Uh, Pretty good. Uh, And then the Lunar Stone was... was, uh. Uh, But this game, I picked it up because it's a horror game. And as 
you should know by now, I quite enjoy my horror games. It's not just a horror game, though. It's an Asian horror game, and there is a very distinct difference between horror and Asian horror. If you are a horror aficionado, you will know that. Um, so, People Wondering has you in the role of a Japanese-Korean small girl of some description. I actually don't know which country it's from, which is embarrassing, but either way, you're a, you're a small girl, and um, you are in a haunted house. You have a lantern uh, with you, and that is it. That is your weapon, is a lantern. The lantern obviously lights the dark, which is useful in a haunted house. But uh, it has two other main functions as well. Whenever you are in an area of particular interest, your lantern will go purple. That means there's something to do here. It may, uh, if you hold it up to something, it may actually reveal something. It may give you a hint. Uh, you may be able to like reach out and touch something that you couldn't previously touch, uh, that kind of stuff. The other color that it will go is red. It will go red when you are about to be attacked, attacked uh, by a ghost. Uh, because, yes, there are ghosts in this game that attack you from random directions. And uh, let me say this unequivocally. This is the scariest game I personally have played in VR. That, hopefully, says a lot. Because not only have I played every VR horror game in existence... All 3,000 of them. But... But... Uh, Resident Evil 7 was like easily went to one of my favorite games of all time, let alone easily, in my opinion, still the best VR game in existence. Are you saying easily or easily isn't our friend? Easily isn't not our friend. <laughs> um, so, so Resident Evil 7, right? You start Resident Evil 7 in VR. The thing that gets you initially is just the fact that that was one of the first horror games ever put in VR. So when you're walking through the house, the Baker house, and uh, you know, you're in VR for the first time and the, you see like the, the gross fucking um, house that you're in and you have Mia like running after you with chainsaws or whatever else, like that horror, that level of horror uh, is, is scary, but it's something that you can become accustomed to is the oh, way that the I feel horror. about it. I feel like once you did maybe an hour or two of that game, there was still the occasional scare, but you became kind of uh, immune to it. Towards the end of the game, you were like, oh, there's another molded monster. Do I have any bullets? Bang, bang, you're dead. Uh, and it was a case of like, there were some parts that stood out, but mostly you would kind of become uh, immune to the to the horror of Resident Evil 7 by the end of the game. So this is a, this is a nine hour, 10 hour game. This game doesn't give you time to get immune to it. And for some reason, it's so terrifying to me because it is essentially almost a VR version of my number one scariest game of all time from my top five scary games Fatal list. Frame. Fatal Frame. Uh, Fatal Frame 2, to be precise, but the whole series is terrifying. So Fatal Frame... Uh, again, Asian horror game where you play a, a small girl um, who is in a haunted house with nothing but a camera. When the ghost gets close to you and gets uh, particularly terrifying, you take your picture and then... Um, Ouch. Huh? I said, ow. I couldn't <laughs> breathe for a second. <laughs> You uh, you take your picture and then the ghost like gets shocked and goes away and, and you, that's how you hurt the ghost, right? In this, swap out your camera for a lantern and that's that's the, the game. You're walking around this house, solving puzzles like Resident Evil, like you're picking up puzzle pieces, putting them in doorways, things like that. And then with your lantern, the ghost will appear somewhere. You won't know which angle it's coming from until your lantern goes red. So you're there like waving your lantern around, waiting for it to go red. And then suddenly out of the blue, this, this ghost will materialize. You have to wait until the last second before you can go <laughs> it's got, and get it's it. It's got a mental image of you back down here just going, ah! Dude, you can watch the <laughs> gameplay. That's totally what I was doing. Like I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so... Not only uh, are those Were you sitting down or standing up? Sitting down. Damn it. Dude, like, it I'm, te I'm telling you, if you watch the gameplay footage, you can see my fear. You can legitimately see... Because you know what I'm scared in a game for two reasons. One, if a jump scare happens and I physically come back, and you can actually see that happen a bunch of times in, in the gameplay video. Because I have a full, complete gameplay. Uh, it is about an hour and a half or so. An hour and a half to two hours, depending on your puzzle-solving prowess. Um... But if you watch the complete gameplay footage, you'll see me A, jumping a lot, and B, um, 
I kind of, uh, I physically, I know people are watching. So whenever I see something that's like terrifying to me, you'll see me shake my head like this. <laughs> so go, nope, that's, nope, that's nope. The, nope. That's me. I don't like this. That's exactly, the, yeah, exactly that. Uh, so the, the way this game is put together, Asian horror is always terrifying to me. It's made infinitely more terrifying by the fact it's, basically the game that I'm the most scared of in the entire universe. Uh, there are tons of jump scares. Ghosts are always, like, to me, the scariest um, thing. But it, again, that might be a personal thing. Like, there, there's you're scared of snakes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not scared of ghosts because I don't believe in them. But when I'm in a game that actually has them, I'm scared of them, right? So it's... Um, ghosts are real. Yeah, it was... It was just something else, man. Now, it's janky as shit. Like, and I said that in the review, which is up. You can watch it. Um, I said it's janky in the review. You have full arms, but apparently your arms have no elbows. So they're like this Stiff. for the whole time. Um, but uh, you have full arms. The movement is weird because it's teleportation, but you don't teleport. You just slowly lumber towards the point that you teleported to. So, like, you press that and you'll kind of, like lumber forward slowly but sometimes she'll just like when you're stopped she'll just shuffle forward again for no reason so it's kind of it's a little like janky uh well, it's a lot janky um but here's the thing the game is so spectacularly scary and immersive and fun that you forget about it you the jank goes away very quickly once you start getting your bearings of the controls you start getting really into it and um Single-handedly, uh, this game scared me more than any other game I've played in VR uh, based off those factors. So if you want the full kind of uh, viewpoint, then go and check out um, the review um, and also the complete gameplay. Uh, it's only an hour and a half for the whole game. Uh, if you want the game yourself, it is the equivalent of about 13 American dollars. Uh, again, really well priced for the length and uh you can get a card from play asia make a hong kong account you know how to do that by now if you don't it's in our playlist and uh and give it a shot because fucking hell man it is uh it's a hell of a game and it, it took me by surprise i was not expecting it to be a that scary b that good so yeah um people wandering and it's chapter one too they're making more of them so i'm uh i'm pretty nervous about having to to jump back into that world because it was you know it was something else so there you go that's your spotlight question question that you've been complaining about mm -hmm. since the dawn of time um, Not since the dawn. Of I bring this up because I, I chose a horror spotlight this week, and I, I knew that this would be something that you wanted to talk about. So, um, as you have so succinctly pointed out, you can't play Moss because there's snakes. You can't play Pupil Wandering or Resident Evil Seven or Jump I'm a giant twice wimp. or a little bit of that. A <laughs> little bit just because you don't enjoy it. You don't yeah. like being scared. Yeah. Right. I I do. So, what is the best? Family friendly experience on PSVR. By family friendly, excuse me. It doesn't have to be just like I didn't want to say non horror. Yeah. I meant something that's like anybody in your family could play it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. From a fourteen year old kid to a seventy five year old uh, grandpa. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think, in your opinion, is the best experience out there that has like no violence? No uh, gore, uh, gore or horror, uh, so uh, none of that stuff. Um, what do you think? First one popped in the head was Rec Room. Rec okay. Room would be would be a lot of fun because it's every, it's things people know how to do already. Um, you just hang out, chat it up like we do. Hang out in the the Rec Room itself, or go do the adventures. I think those are some of those are more in depth when it comes to controls. So I'm like, eh, not as much about that. The the one that always pops in my head though, whenever I have anybody try PSVR because there's no controls involved it's just an experience the world is uh, Ocean Descent like the PSVR world's disc is the best because there's so many different things Minus on that disc the shark I assume no well that's then that's a scary experience I'm saying like n like family friendly no horror no family friendly doesn't have to be not there's, there's a shark attacking you dude that's too scary for kids no it's not <laughs> okay all right. Well, there is a non-shark version. Yes, that. but that's what but, I'm saying. That disc as a whole is the best. But okay. Ocean Descent is the best experience London inside Heist. of that. London Heist would be again. If you're if you're saying not shooting, then yeah. no. But if you're saying like my brother, who is now 18, but at the time, say let's say this is like four years ago. Brother, my brother's 14. He would like London Heist. My mom and dad would like Ocean Descent. 
My I would like the luge. My sister would like uh what's the I was gonna say headmaster, but that's not what it's called. What's the Danger Ball? That's it. It's so like things like that. So that to me is the best collection of things for everybody. Because not there's no one game that's good for everybody. So that's family friendly for a family that doesn't mind the occasional cuss word and a shark. Yeah. Okay. I mean rec room rec room you have to deal with the online people. So who knows what you're getting mm. when you play online? Because as it says, ESR, ESRB does not rate online experiences. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned yet. Huh? Job Simulator. Oh, I mean, yeah, but that's uh, that's partially. I'm again, if you're talking from everything from twelve year old to grandma, grandma wouldn't do Job Simulator very well, I don't think. Because well, let's cause pretend that grandma choice. has a modicum of self control and can play VR. Let's, I'm not saying like it has to be something that's like stupidly simple. Um, let's pretend that they're able to do whatever control scheme it might. Be. I mean, one of the other ones that popped in my my head when it, if if they are competent when it comes to video gaming, no be, motion sickness, and they would be Star Trek can control. That's Star Trek would be a really good one because it's all voice based. So as long as you know what you're doing, and if you're especially if you're a Star Trek fan, like Golden, um, I I just think. Because for me, I mean, super hot would be cool, but that's also, again, you're Guns, getting a little violence. bit more violent. But if VR is 12 plus, to me, for me growing up, the way my parents were was I couldn't shoot humans, which I guess those are kind of humans. I mean, Humanoid. they're glass. They're glass. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of dehumanizes them a little bit. But like the way my parents raised me was I weren't, I wasn't allowed to shoot humans, so I could play Halo, but I was not allowed to play Call of Duty or GTA till I got older. Um, because shooting aliens apparently is better than shooting humans, just because it Fuck those dis- aliens. disconnect. <laughs> right. It's a disconnect in your in your brain. So that's the way I was raised. Doesn't mean it's right, wrong, or indifferent. That's just this is when my parents were raised. So I have the same sort of mentality of like, mm. if you're 12, you you're allowed to have some sort of violence in your life. <laughs> that was a weird <laughs> sentence to say, um, but you know what I mean. Like in video <laughs> games, you're allowed to have. You're getting to the point where you're going to start playing the Call of Duties. You're going to start playing Halo or Gears of War or whatever the fuck it is now. I mean, Horizon Zero Dawn is a violent game. You're shooting robots. But to me, that's better than going in and shooting humans, like than playing right. Call of Duty, because it was, again, the, the disconnect. So, I don't know. I would I would say, I mean, Rec Room was the first one that came to mind just because it's got the most going on, but you have to deal with people online unless you're in a private room. But then it's no fun unless you have multiple friends who have it and that kind of thing. But I think the... PlayStation World's disc as a whole when it comes to just family friendly friendly experiences is that because it's got something for everyone but that thing may not be th- the same thing for everybody for everybody. You may have to tweak the settings be like yeah. cuz there's swearing in uh London Heist and there's the shark and the not shark levels. A lot of people will take people on the not shark version of um No, oh, I say fuck that. I'm scaring you right off the bat. Well, you tell them you're not going to do the shark and then you do the shark. Yeah. But um my my favorite <laughs> there's a video of it and I think I've shown it to you but we had when first game night we had uh Beth and Shelby over and they made the same noise when the shark showed up. <laughs> it was this like weird squeal no, he's like, eh. <laughs> and I laugh so hard because if you play them side by side, they're very similar. And then Beth tried to get all tough and like, "Fuck you, shark!" <laughs> Shelby just squealed the whole time. She did not like it. So what I would throw out there as an option for those of you looking for a more family-friendly experience is Ultra Wings. I think or Marvels. Um, I think Ultra Wings. Marvels a good good show. Forgot about that one. Um, Ultra Wings is, and the reason why I use Ultra Wings, because there, there are plenty of like family friendly VR experiences that are out there, but I think they have varying levels of quality to them. And I feel like like Windlands, for example, like that's a great game, but Windlands has like a motion sickness factor that comes into it. It's a lot less than um, it was before. When you if you use the moves, it's a lot less. It's interesting. I, I haven't gone back. Yeah, actually. I, I need to. we. I mean, I still, got, I, I still got. I still got. Yeah, I still got whoop with it, but like not the same whoop I got before. Right. Like it was. It still had mo- moments of like, okay, it's time to get out of the headset. I feel like grandma might fall over if you put her in windlands. <laughs> to have her sit down, you but, see, um, the, see the experience. But I think ultra ultra wings because um, it is at its heart a simple game. Uh, literally, as soon as you know how to start the plane and get it off the ground it's always the same way that you do that. So, like, all you have to do is, you know, um, hit the fuel gauge, flip a switch, press a button, pull back the uh, accelerator thing, and then go. And then lift yourself off the ground when you're at the end of the runway. Like, once you get that part down... Um, I'll let you finish if I get another okay. one. Once you get that part down and you get to the up-in-the-air part, um, it's it's flying. It's, it's how you would imagine to fly a small 
plane. Yes, there's guns, uh, but the guns are to shoot balloons. <laughs> so it's not quite the same. You can imagine them as dart guns if you want to. Um, and not every aspect of that game involves guns. The gun is there as a particular type of um, mission, I guess, that you can do. There's also like missions where you have to take photos of things as you're flying by. So there's a variety of those. Uh, so like, it, like the guns are there in a Nintendo-friendly gun way, like almost Splatoon-level friendly. Um, like a light gun? Right. With Duck Hunt. I mean, Duck, Hunt, Duck Hunt was violent, but I played that when I was like It's still like, like a 9mm, but like, you know, it's you're you're shooting at balloons, so yeah. it's, it's kind of different. Um, Again, Duck Hunt was violent, and I played that when I was four or five. I was shooting birds <laughs> with a gun. But if you if you are um, you don't have to use the HOTUS either like you use standard controllers move controllers work great for it but uh, but it's just so it's so well done it's so cartoony and friendly it's it's one of those experiences where when you do actually get up in the air and you're kind of like banking and stuff you actually like you feel like a little bit of inertia but it's a fun inertia it's mm-hmm. it's it's like a fairground inertia it's not like oh my god I'm gonna lose my lunch inertia so um, I think the quality level of that game helps it to stand out a lot and I think that um, as a kind of a relatively easy, once you can just do like four things um, to turn your plane on and go, uh, it's a relatively easy and fun experience. So I think uh, I would recommend anyone that's looking for a family-friendly game that's a decent price range, it's like 30 bucks or something, uh, to look for Ultra Wings, because I think that is, uh, that's the one if you're trying to avoid the, the spoopies. I've got one that it's going to win. Okay. Like this is the one, and I don't think you're gonna be able to argue with it. Do you remember back in the '90s? <laughs> yes. Do you remember the game that everybody played? Super Mario. Close. It's an, on a Nintendo platform. Contra. No, it is on a Nintendo handheld. Teen. Oh. It's made by a Russian. Tetris. Yep. What do we have in VR? Uh, Super Hypercube? No, I think that's too complicated. Tumble? There you go. Okay. Tumble and VR, I think, would be perfect because everybody can solve puzzles, and that's just a stacking game. You can, you can teach anybody to reach out and stack. Physics space. It's not that hard. Mm. So I think that's kind of where... It's a good I think that one. I think that one would be... If we're talking, I'm going to say straight neutered, like plain Jane, nobody's going to be offended by it. It's going to be that game because you're able to... It's a puzzle game, and I could see Grandma going in and stacking, and I could see my brother going in and stacking headmaster as well thinking about it headmaster be a good one see I, I picture grandma though not being able to do this very well all she has to do is she's like creaky. walk at the ball you gotta remember she's, she's <laughs> creaky tom she's grandma's, creaky that's creaky you got some creaks like, oh. yeah. <laughs> knocked over yeah the uh, ball's coming in her face but like tumble you have nothing coming at you you have you're in control of the whole environment yeah and setting them back them down yeah so yeah i just Good shot. I, I thought of tetris so i'm like that one's got that that it'll sell 70 million or 100 I don't, I don't even know how many copies tetris sold but a lot um, yeah, so so there are a lot of family-friendly experiences out there for you guys if you're looking for them. A lot of them are older titles, actually. I feel like a lot of the newer ones are trying to... They've kind of seen what works best, and they're trying to imitate, like, uh, you know, Resident Evil and all the, the rest of it. The game has sold more than 125 million copies. Unsurprising. Standing 5 million per year as of 2009. That's, that's Tetris, by the way, not yes. Tumble VR. Yeah, that's out of, as of 2009. Uh, Don't know what it is so now. So there you go. So, um... Yeah, and that's that's our show. Uh, I'd like you guys to drop below your personal favorite family-friendly title that uh, you think that uh, other families might be interested to play, or if they have uh, younger kids, or just uh, you're just not into the gore, and you're not into you know the people wondering would scare the pants off of you. You don't want to play that. You want to play something else that's kind of like really kind of shows off the prowess of VR and the experience of VR, but without necessarily uh, the blood and Guts and shooting and, and all the rest of it. Tetris, um, as, as of 2010, has sold over 170 million copies. How is it still selling? iOS, oh, mobile, damn. PS4. They put There's a Tetris on every platform that's come out since Game Boy. Like, every fucking platform Texas has had some sort of Tetris. Tetris. Um, I mean, I bought a Tetris game for Xbox when it came out. So it was, uh, I think it was boxed with uh, Star Wars. There you go. <laughs> Weird combination. Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, there. you're fine. Um, so, so yeah, so family friendly stuff uh, minus Tetris uh, that you think that other people might enjoy playing. Drop it in the comments below, and don't forget we asked you for your viewpoints on the other new releases this week. If you have played CubeWorks or uh, Super Knockout League, or uh, or is it just Knockout League? Knockout League. I was super. It's it's it it reminded me of Punch Out, and um. The the other one, I can't remember what it was. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, thank you again, everybody, for the consistent love that you show us on this show. We know we're a smaller channel. Uh, we do our very, very best to bring you everything we can in the world of VR, uh, specifically PSVR. And we're always super grateful for all the views that we get and all the comments that we get. And we love engaging with you. So please engage with us. Um, so thank you uh, for all of that. Um, anything you want to add, Keegan? There used to be a Tetris Star Wars Clone Wars combo pack that I owned. It's a real game for the original Xbox. That's the first time you've ever answered that question. <laughs> it was still <laughs> equally as useless. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the second, second level. level. Bye. That is a game I owned. Do you have any idea how hard it is <laughs> to be professional when the room stinks of the worst beef jerky fart you've ever smelled in your entire life. Huh? They can't hear you. Did you see? Did you see how professional I was? You have no idea. Ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level.